Welcome to Neo's Neo Cafe. I'm Neo. What can I get you? Coffee. Cup of coffee, hot, delicious. Nevacino, a special kind of cappuccino for the people of Novalis, made with love and extras. Hot chocolate, sweet, hot, with a tiny bit of caffeine and cream and soda. Um, I don't know. That's pretty sweet. Not thirsty anymore. Thanks for this, Neo. Have a spectacular day. Hello. Is that you? Camus, why are you calling me on the comm? I'm on a coffee break here. I have a reason. Is the reason that you don't like being alone? Yes, that is it. Is it okay? It's fine. I'm glad of the company. Why do you need the coffee? I've never worked night shift before, Camus. Coffee creates the illusion that I'm actually still awake. You wouldn't understand. You don't sleep. I sleep. I guess you go offline and recompile your source code. That's a bit like sleeping. I sleep. Okay, I heard you. Tell me what you found out about Cora. I found three different types of things about... Camus, this data analysis and retrieval, it's not that you can't do it, it's just it's a bit... dry. Why don't we let the generic automata take care of this part? You can go offline for a bit. Sleep! Sure. Custom personality Camus offline. Generic automata reinstated. All right, Mr. Personality. Tell me what we know about Cora now. Three distinct data points of origin for Cora. Two, deprecated and accessible only via the underweb. Warning, your automata was detected accessing this information and your identity was compromised. Shit. Well, too late to do anything about it now. Tell me what you found. Give me the official data first. Cora is a term colloquially used by citizens of Nivalis to refer to the combination of AI and mechanical systems, which manage the logistical and maintenance systems operating throughout the city. I knew that much. Go on. As an anthropomorphism of a mercurial personality, it is unclear if Cora exhibits a form of sentience or sapience. <laughs> Best data suggests Cora is fundamentally inconceivable by human intelligence, existing just beyond the event horizon of biological minds. Not helpful at all. Why do people keep talking about Cora then? Day-to-day -day usage of Cora in conversation invokes the term in the same way one might talk about fate, luck, or serendipity. Example? I checked my balance and I'm all out of credits. Cora knows where it all went. There are two more data points for Cora? Yes, one from City Archive in a defunct data pool called the Internet. Another from a paper-based text called The Exegesis, a pseudo-historical book scanned and OCR'd 109,572.75 days ago. Read me the extract of the exit whatever. Reigning atop a hierarchy of smaller automatons, VIs, androids, and machines, Cora is the last of the 12 founders. Complex AIs that formed an advisory council for the human rulers of the city. Why did the founders fail? Did their source code encounter insurmountable logical errors? Or, worst of all, did the founders choose to abandon humanity? And if so, will Cora soon make that same choice? What's your confidence rating on the accuracy of this information? 11.40%. Higher than I thought. Does everyone in the city know this stuff but me? Cora is commonly discussed, appearing in up to 0.8% of all communication, but little substantive, verifiable data exists as to its nature. Read me the last data, the one from the internet. Cora, computer-operated recycling agent. That's it? I don't know how this relates to hackers or AI. No further data available. Make a copy of that exegesis thing to local storage, encrypted. If I get a data violation, I don't want to lose access. And bring Camus back online. Activating custom automata personality, Camus. Did you find out about Cora? More or less. 
I don't know what I was hoping for. Will you get food, too? Not hungry. Hey, Camus, have a look at the cafe menu. Do you see all the different types? If you drank coffee, what type would you order? Uh, donut coffee? That's not really... Oh, no. I said something dumb. Actually, Camus, I think donut coffee sounds pretty great. Vertical repulsor unlocked. Maybe that increases the speed that we can go up and down. Excuse me, I see you sell old stuff. Do you know what this is? Pass it here, let's see. Hmm, oh my. What is it? I thought maybe an old music storage. Music? No, not at all, this is a game. An old one at that. Where did you find it? Actually, it was near some trash. No, I don't believe it. So it's an antique. Oh yes, this was played on a Spectrum home computer. 48K. You needed an interface to make the joystick work. Kempstern or Protec. Otherwise, you had to play on the rubber keys. Even the words I understood in that sentence didn't make sense. It's like this, you see. You put this tape into a tape recorder first and... Nope, still no clue. Long ago, information was stored on magnetic tapes. You see the strips here? These wound round playheads or something like that. No one knows exactly how it operated now but we can feed this into our comprehender and it gives us executable code. So this was a game people played on a screen? Oh yes, it would take a long time to upload the data to memory and the executable data itself is tiny. It's hard to comprehend how our progenitors managed to work within such strict memory constraints. You're really into this stuff, aren't you? I'm interested in the technology, sure. But what really fascinates me is this game. You control the little sprite. You walked along a street and you punched everyone you came across. We believe these old games were deeply symbolic, like Sisyphus with the rock. So they were morality lessons? We collectors believe so. I think every one of these classic games can teach us a lesson. What did punching people in the street teach us? Metaphorically, it is telling us that we cannot simply fight urban decay through physical force. You see, in this game, when you win, you start again. So the cycle repeats. Exactly. So through the game, we learn that the violence is entertainment, but the creator of the game seeks to tell us that violence is also pointless. These old games were pretty deep. How did this end up lying on the street? There's plenty of other street vendors who are collectors like me. One of them, old Sinclair, he died last week. And you're not really allowed to own this stuff. If Corpsec catches you... Oh, I'm sorry about Mr. Sinclair. He was in the zone that fell into the sea last month. Can't be helped. You should keep your eye out for more of these. They may be scattered all over the city. You'll pay me for them? I sure will, as long as you keep it quiet. In fact, I can even show you this one if you like. It has a two-player mode. We can punch people in the street together. <laughs> Maybe another time. Just the limbs are fine. I found another game, I think. It's different, though. Let's talk. Give it here. This one is a circuit board, so no magnets, right? Fumbo's Quest. It's a game cartridge. That means it loads much faster than the tape. So you would need to wait for the game to start? How long? Seconds? For the cartridge here, yeah. For the tape, maybe five minutes. Minutes? People had longer attention spans back then. You would need a different computer to play this one? Yes, a game console and a rare one at that, C64. What was this game about? It was a side-scrolling platformer. Uh, what, what, what? You would move either left or right, jumping your sprite up and down as you collected... stuff. The games were very abstract back then. You had to use your imagination a lot. What was the central metaphor of Fumbo's quest, then? You had to collect assembly-level instructions to program a computer, freeing a consciousness called Pili. By uploading a consciousness to a machine, you save the world. That's a bit far-fetched. You have to remember, these games were all symbolic. The hero's journey and all that. So is this worth more than the game about punching? A little more, yeah. Good find. You want to play this one? I'm good. I'll just take the limbs for now. I have another one. 
This time, I'm sure it's a game. It's on magnetic tape again, but just one big flat disc. A floppy? Give it here. Oh yes, I know this one. Much quicker to load than the tapes. This is Darkmare. What's it about? It's a kind of RPG. Rocket propelled grenade? So it's a military game. No, no, it's a real playing game. You play it through the real life of a person. In this case though, it's the real life of a dungeon exploring adventurer with a sword and armor. I assume you mainly hit things with your sword? Yes and no. These games often had quite complex systems. Statistics for your strength and dexterity and so on, all measured with numbers. Why did people stop playing those sorts of games? Some people never did. I'm in some classic game clubs. Illicit meetups where we play board and card games and classics like this. Why are they illicit? Co-ops own the rights to these games, even the really old ones. In our club, we had to pool our finances for a year for a chess license. That's the only official one we could afford. That's why I had the games behind the counter. Is that why these old games hold such value then? Because they're illegal? That's not the only reason. These games define our past. They were our escapism and our sucker for a thousand years. A hundred thousand. We resolved conflict, explored ideas, went on adventures and created whole new worlds with these games. We can't let the medium slip away from the people who need it most. Pretty idealistic for a street peddler. I just really like games. They're important. All right, you convinced me. Maybe I will come and try Darkmare. I'll start loading it up. After I finish my shift. Driver 14 FC, are you out of your hava? I was on a break. There are no breaks for me or for you. Have you seen the vids? No, why? More accidents in Sector 21. No, uh, Sector 23. Or is it 21? Bombings? Not sure. This is bad for us. We've lost more drivers this week than in the past year. Everything okay, Control? I don't know, kid. I don't know. What's your real name? I'm tired of numbers. Rania. I'm gonna look out for you, Rania. Things will get better after tonight. I promise. We just need to get through this one night. What's your name, Control? I'm not supposed to say. Goddamn. Is something going wrong over there? You sound... It's all wrong here. I just... Maybe I'll tell you after this job. Okay. What you got for me? In Gallows Row, there's an old escalator called the Ascension. Someone at the base wants to surrender a package of their belongings. Where does the escalator go? Trust me, Rania. This job will be much easier for you if you don't ask that question again. You're looking for a guy named Gil. Oh, and one more thing. Yeah? Enjoy your coffee. All I got is a bottle of sake stashed in my desk drawer. And tonight, I'm having a drink. If they're not happy with that, they can fucking fire me. <laughs> Cheers. That's a headache, Control. I like Control. Yeah, as I was saying... Danya's awesome, and there's something really surreal about playing a game like Cloudpunk right now, playing a game that is, to me, modern. And a character within this modern game is talking about old games from the perspective of far in the future, and obviously some things have been lost over time, and they don't quite understand the reality of those old games. I think we should take a stop somewhere. Oh, um, let's go see if we can upgrade. It was like new ascender things that we unlocked. Oops. Air. Vertical repulsor. These souped up repulsors with ceramic coils have almost no drag for quicker ascents. Cool. It's pretty cheap, too. 350. That is awesome. Ooh. 
Ooh, much faster. Is it just a sense? Look, eh. No, actually, I think the scents are faster too, although it's a little bit hard to tell. No, it's definitely faster. We need gas. Hmm, I guess I'll just go straight over here. There's only like three large locations and... I don't know, maybe the quest will take me over here after we finish over here at the Fulcrum Sector. if you run out of gas. my insurance information with that car that I hit. This place is confusing. There's somebody to talk to down below. I guess that elevator might take me there. Well, let's go right now. Jimmy. Hey, got a minute? Sure, you got a minute. Who doesn't have a minute? It's uh, less than 60 seconds. Near enough, right? <laughs> Jimmy is the name. Jimmy, roll high. I don't really have a minute. You're uh, wondering about the hands, right? You gotta know, everyone does. <laughs> they, they always ask me about the hands. I always say the same thing. I, I do. I always say, if the shuffle wasn't working, they wouldn't have needed to break them. I'm right, right? Were you cheating at cards? Roll high. Wasn't I clear before when I says my name? <laughs> sure I was. You was listening. You're a clever lady. I got in trouble because I could roll double sixes every single time. Really? Near enough. Near enough that they broke my hand for it. Then when I learned with the other, they broke that too. Now, if I could just get some limbs for augments, I know I could make the money back for you at the table. I'm not interested. Sorry. You'll be back. They always come back. I got the skills, lady. <laughs> You're gonna invest in them one day. I'm telling you. Judging by the fact that I can't talk with them anymore, I don't think I am gonna be coming back. Seven more punch cards. Hold on, something's happening. Sounds like another accident just happened, like another building exploded or something. I guess I missed it. Anyway, human hand? 
This appears to be... Oh no, this is someone's hand. They're not supposed to just throw a biological limb in the garbage. And it appears to be wearing a wedding ring, too. Should I keep this? I guess someone might want it back. <laughs> God. <laughs> Cherry pie seller. Ooh. One slice, please. Oh, wait. Are those real cherries? Well, they ain't holograms, lady. Yeah, but where would you get real cherries in Navalis? Lots of places. Orchards up in the spire, growing beds down in the vents. One of those labs that grow cultured retro fruit. I'm not talking hypothetically here. Where did you get those cherries? Wherever you like, lady. I find the best way to enjoy the flavor comes from tasting with your imagination. And I find the best way to avoid food poisoning is to know where my cherries come from. I swear, these taste exactly like cherries. That is not a normal thing to say about actual cherries. You want a slice or not? Yes. N no. I can't decide. Have you even tasted real cherries before? Back home, they were my favorite. The Eastern Peninsula? Yeah. Well, you'll love this pie. A genuine slice of home. What do you say? No, actually, I'm good. Suit yourself, country girl. Change your mind, did you? I knew you'd come back. No. No. I'll probably be back. Much better than you thought, right? I... No way I'm not gonna eat that, right? Hey, you interested in having your photo taken with this magnificent creature? Just 100 limbs. No. Wouldn't you like to know his name? He is Norman. Hi, Norman. Is he a real bird? Norman isn't a bird. He's a falcon. A real one? Well, he's not a hologram. But is he a real falcon or is he artificial? Ah, I understand your question now. Uh, you must think this is based on an animal. This is not. It is a unique creation. A falcon. I've seen falcons before. No, you must be mistaken. Perhaps you have seen a sparrow. They are very similar. You see, I specialize in chimeras. What are chimeras? Well, you know, there's a huge market for artificial animals, especially those that are rare or extinct. Chimeras are different. They are artificial animals which uh, never existed, created from the imagination of man. But I told you I've seen a real falcon. Eh? Where? Well, they're extinct now, I guess, but I saw them all the time when I was young. I'm from the Eastern Peninsula. They would circle around the farm in the summer, uh, until the big dust storms hit back in the Year of the Dragon. Listen, lady, I need you to do me a favor. Uh, okay. What? Please leave, and don't tell anyone that there are real falcons, huh? Sure, but why does it make any difference? When people know they're looking at something that once existed instead of something that never could, they get depressed. And sad people don't spend money. <laughs> Bye, Norman. Are you the delivery person? Rania, yeah, I'm to take your package. It's everything. The limbs, calm, holocrons, augments, everything I own. Make sure my family gets it. Just drop it in the post. I can't leave the queue or I'll lose my place. Are you sure about this? Yeah, a chance to see the spire. I, I gotta take the shot. I get to go above the clouds. Is it safe? Sure, yeah, of course. Okay then, good luck, I guess. Hey, thanks. Maybe I'll see you around. Maybe. I love the character portraits. They're really cool. Traffic in this sector is above safe. Please drive here. 
Hey, Ronnie, uh, you met that guy going on the Ascension? Is he really going through with it? He says the Ascension takes him to the Spire. It sure does. And no further. What do you mean? It's an escalator to nowhere. It just ends. Then what? Well, then he falls a few miles down into the sea. Oh, God. an escalator that goes nowhere. You think everything in the city is logical? Look around, Rania. None of this makes sense. The city AI has gone mad. He said it was safe. Before he gave you all his possessions? He knew? He knew. I don't get it. You lived outside Navalis, right? So you've, you've seen this guy. You've got that memory. I've never seen this guy. I can live without it. But imagine you'd seen it just once. What would you do to see it again? <sighs> How's the sake control? You don't drink, right? You should try it sometime, Rania. When things are going wrong, it's a great way to keep yourself trapped in the long right now. Are you a poet now, Control? You know it. What should I do with his possessions? Well, he stiffed us on the bill. His payment was rejected. So if you got anything from him, you should return it to a Cloudpunk delivery chute nearby to cover his debt. What about his family? Let me make this as clear as I can, Rania. I don't know if he gave you something or if he gave you nothing. But I knew if he gave you something, I'd have to tell you to return it to Cloudpunk HQ. Control out. Uh-huh. He sounded different. Are we going to take Gil's things back to Cloudpunk HQ? Well, everything's packaged and postmarked. So if we dropped them at the mail office, they'd get back to his family and Cloudpunk would never know. But maybe it would be good for us to give it to Cloudpunk? And if we broke the rules, we could get in trouble. Or get Mr. Control in trouble. Quiet for now, Chemis. I have to think. I'm gonna send the things back to their family. If that gets me in trouble, so be it. Oh, this is to deliver the package to Cloudpunk that shoot there. Looks like that's everything. God, Novalis is a depressing city, isn't it? It's filled with so much gloom and so many desperate people. So much inequality. this place looks like during the day. Aha! Yeah! I was thinking it might take us over here next, and it does.
Hey, Block 4-0, are you still fighting the system? Hey, it's Cowpunk. Damn right we are. We're fucking this shit up. <laughs> How exactly are you fucking this shit up? We're making a motherfucking playground, dog. You know, I don't think I've ever heard any other gangs that talk quite like you do. What's the matter, Cloudpunk? Our speech too fresh for ya? Um, no. Did you watch a lot of old movies, maybe? It ain't about what we say we're gonna do. It's about what we do and how we do it. I guess so. I can't believe you're making a playground. The corpse don't want the kids playing no more. We ain't gonna let them take our swings. You got a problem with that, Cloudpunk? With you making a playground for kids? No, I think it's kind of amazing. You hear that, Razor? She thinks I'm amazing. You're all right, Cloudpunk. You ever get yourself a small human, you bring them here to play on the swings. Love them. <laughs> Here. Huh. Grilled roaches with a sumac coating. Pretty good if eaten while warm and crispy. Oh, that is, that is gross. Undernet glasses. Sunglasses with a green tint. Hacker's first choice. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, come back in. I love these. Nice. <laughs> Can we pass through here? Ah. Oh. Your face looks familiar. Do you need some stems? Thanks. See you again. Soon. Oh, it sounds like another accident or something. Is that the tram going by? That might have just been the, the tram or, or train going by. Sounds terrifying. Ah, this is where we drop it. I can't do it, Camus. I can't give away Gil's final possessions to settle his debts. Will we get in trouble? I don't care. Unlocked, unlocked the fish tank for our apartment. Okay, so I can't get these things back here. That's through the thing that I can't get through. So that's it for here for now. Okay, I still have the thing that says bring the suspicious item to corpse Is that the detonator? Hey, friendly. Uh, um, are you there? Yeah. You don't sound good, Control. What? Well, I'm fine. I, if I could just sleep. I used to be able to sleep, you know. Are you sure you're okay? What is wrong with him? I think he's had some drinks. He sounds strange. Like he is confused. Uh, broadcasting nav point. Collect the package, 14FC. Uh, get on with it. Who from? Where am I going? Always questions from you. Just do your goddamn job. Control out. Fuck off, Control. 
So should I give the item a corpse sec? Like, I don't want to help out corpse sec, but this is... This this detonator isn't really about helping out corpse sec. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna turn it in. found this? I thought I should hand it in to the authorities. Or someone who might know what to do with it. Ma'am, what is this? I don't know. I found it. I think it might be... Give it to me. Now. Yes, I was just going to. I came to you. Is this some kind of scam? You know what? I'm just going to leave. What does this button do? No idea. Bye then. Stay here. I am going to get to the bottom of this. You go ahead. I have no idea what that button does, though, so for safety's sake, I suggest you... Hmm, nothing happened. Did you just press that? I literally just said... Nothing happened again. Stop pressing the button. Ma'am, I'm going to ask you to step back, please. Fine, I don't want to be around you while you press a big red button on what looks a lot like a detonator anyway. Wait, something happened. Ugh. A light came on. There's words on the screen. What does it say? I can't read it. Let me see. Here. I can read this. It's Arabic. And? It says, please don't press this button again. Oh. I swear, that's what it says. All right, then. Well, I'd better ask my supervisor about this. Uh, please move along, ma'am. Does your supervisor speak Arabic? No. Why? No reason. We've been here before. Yeah, it looks like we have. So there's no items there. But there's a lot of items there. And there. And there. Ooh. Well, our goal is over here. It looks like we've already been there as well. But after going there, we could head over here. over it. Ooh, look at this building. It's interesting. It's like completely abandoned. Well, almost abandoned. It's got a couple lights. Really stands out compared to everything else. This is Octavius Butler. What a name. I'm the delivery driver. I'm here to pick up something. Yes, you're here to take our original corbet. Huh? <laughs> it's a painting, dear. You'll be taking me and Mr. Butler, too. 
I don't think I'm supposed to take passengers. What is all this nonsense? Mr. Octavius Butler, this was all supposed to be arranged. Didn't you tell the company that we simply can't let this painting out of our sight? I did, my love, I did. There must be some confusion. I'm sure our young driver friend will consent to take us. It won't be a problem and we'd hate to raise a complaint. Is that not right, young miss? I guess so. Let's be going then. I want to see our new apartment as soon as possible. Apparently, Trisha and the Joneses have moved in next door already. And I don't want her spreading gossip about our new home and how it still smells like smoked fish. Parking prohibited. Deliver your passengers first. Oh my. This is cozy. I've never been in a vehicle like this. Very retro. I agree. Very nice indeed. Do you understand us, young lady, or should we speak slower? I understand fine. Dear, you must be very curious, are you not? How a woman like me and an android like Mr. Octavius Butler met. Sure. <laughs> Well, I can tell from your accent that you're not from the city, but we're quite enlightened here, you know. Isn't that right, Mr. Octavius Butler? That's right, my love. Some might say that Mr. Octavius Butler is human passing, but I don't care about that. I love him for who he is inside, not what his outer skin is made of. It's a polymer plastic. <laughs> oh, you are hilarious. What was I saying? Oh, yes, we met at a charity fundraiser. We both work for Life Corp. I'm in HR, and Mr. Octavius Butler is in acquisitions. We had executive offices next door. We started meeting for coffee, and one thing led to another. Wow. And now, just a week until our fifth anniversary, we're on our way to our new home. Aren't you happy for us? Uh, yeah, definitely. We're suddenly happier than the family that's moving out. Oh, don't start all that again. This area is up and coming now. The people living there couldn't afford it, and they wouldn't fit in either. With hypergentrification, they're forced out instantly instead of being pushed out over months and years. It's a short, sharp shock, but it's for the best for everyone. People who argue against free markets don't really believe in freedom. What freedom does this bring to the people who can't plan for a future? That's just life in Navalis. If you don't like it, go live somewhere else. Not everyone is suited for life in the city. Some people need to live here? Well, maybe in the nice places, but who needs to live in the filth of the marrow? No one stays there without good reason. And the reason is they all dream of getting rich with some scheme or other to make their way up to the spire. That's the Navalis dream. Our society has a million slots and each must be filled. Every time someone moves up a peg, someone fills in the gap behind them. And every time someone at the bottom slips, where do they go? I read in the holocrons yesterday that the most common food in the marrow is now roach meat kebabs, noodles with rat. Those kinds of people love street food. No offense, dear. None taken. I love a maggot pizza. We're almost at our destination. Splendid. God, the missus is intolerable. You see, Mr. Octavius Butler, look at this fabulous place. Different and together, but separate. That's how we exist together in this city without all the systems breaking down. That's what they used to say about androids, you know. Oh, don't hearken back to your revolutionary days again. You have rights now, just like humans. Androids are just a part of society, low and high. We are all the same, you know. As long as we all have the same bank balance. Well, you're welcome to give away all your money to the orphans and the rat children. You can come and stay in my penthouse as long as you take off your shoes and have a shower before you touch me. Very generous of you, my love. Have either of you ever actually been to the Marrow? Oh, heavens no, dear. 
I have family in the Spire, and Mr. Octavius Butler is from a very distinguished line of androids. He's descended from the very first Korra models. Wait, what does that mean? Why do you mention Korra? It's just a saying, isn't it, Mr. Octavius Butler? In a way... It means he's refined, dear, just like me. We have no prejudice here. We're very enlightened people in the city, you know. Yeah, you said that before. Do you think the family will still be there when we arrive? I shouldn't think so. Two hours of rent at peak rate and they'd be bankrupt. I'm sure they're long gone, either moved on or forced out by Corpsec for violating their lease. I bet they'll be somewhere nice. Not everyone ends up in the marrow, you know. Maybe one day they'll seize the means of production down there. <laughs> oh, you are witty. The production of mold burgers and rat salad. No offense, dear. Yeah, none taken. Thank you for getting us to our destination, driver. It's been fun to drive in a vehicle that's much more rustic than our limo. Our painting made it here safely, too. And what a lovely neighborhood. Quite so. Their marriage is going to implode within months. Lots of items over here. God, this is why I'm not a taxi driver. I didn't like them. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't think they would like automata or dogs. Or anyone poorer than them, less educated, less well-connected, less stuck up. Different in any way. But one of them was an android. I know, Camus. I have a question. Go ahead. Did you really eat maggot pizza? No, Camus. I was playing along. Oh, a joke. I laugh at them. Me too. It's all we can do. Hmm. So... It is very quiet. It makes me nervous. We can listen to the ad streams if you like. Are they interesting? Sure, if you want to learn all about everything we can never afford. What about... music? No thanks. We can check the weather feed if you like. If you want it, I can put it on. Fine, but we're not tuning into any of the Corp music feeds. They're all ads and Corp approved pop stars. They sound so empty, hollow. How do we find other feeds? I only know about Corp channels. The radio, Camus. The what? An electromagnetic wave of a frequency between about 300 kilohertz and 300 megahertz? You can tune that in, right? Yes, I have found it. I'm hearing it now. How strange. It's the easiest way to broadcast without the corpse shutting you down. They've been playing music with radio waves for thousands of years, you know. How did you know? Mom told me if I ever visited Novalis, I should tune in to the pirate radio. She said it was the only good thing about the city. Go ahead, play something over the speakers. What about this? I like it. Maybe something a bit more relaxed, though. I know this one. I like the bit that goes ba ba ba. Yeah, it's nice, Cat. <laughs> Hold on, I think I should turn the music volume up. There is. Oh, oh, what about this? Do we know who this is? No. It is radio. Right, sorry. Dumb question. Do you like this one more? I like this one. I like it too, but keep searching. There is one more. Yes, this is perfect. Mom would have liked this. We have a new job coming in. From Control? He normally calls. The checksum confirms it's Cloudpunk. I have a nav point. Let's go then. No call, just a nav point. That's a little bit suspicious. Oh, this is nice. Sweet. 
20 punch cards. of things I'm missing on the other side. There's a lot of portals there, too. Let's try one of the other portals over here. Requires Scorpsec Flyer. Well, I've got one. Aha! Uh -huh. Welcome to Ashima Ramen and Seafood. My favorite. Thanks. Have a nice day. Almost all the items. Final item. Where should we head next? I want to go to Evelyn. I want to turn in those punch cards. I'm really curious about those. 